This is Ken Boyd with St. Louis Test Preparation, and this is another one of our financial accounting videos. Financial Accounting 16, Bank Reconciliation and Proof of Cash. Here's our Facebook page and the website, stltest.net. I'm going to start off with some detail at the top here in a bank reconciliation, and we're going to use that information to go into what can be a difficult topic, which is proof of cash. So if you can envision setting up your bank reconciliation first, we have balance per bank, which is the bank statement at the top, and we have reconciling items to get us to the correct cash balance in blue. Then we have balance per book in red, that's the balance that's on the accounting records. We have adjustments and we come up with a correct cash balance of 21044 that also agrees to the correct cash balance in the balance per bank section. So, first of all, the 221190 comes from the November 30th bank statement. That's where we get the 221190. We have deposits in transit. It says here the deposit of 3680 was mailed on November 30th, but doesn't appear on the bank statement. So that needs to be added in those deposits of 3680. There were checks written in November that were not charged yet, did not, do not appear on the November bank statement as of 1130, totaling $5,001. We subtract those outstanding checks because they're in route to somebody or in somebody's hand and not yet cash, so we subtract those. And then finally, the uh, bank incorrectly charged this company for a $175 check that should have been cashed through another client, another customer. So we add back the $175 that the bank took out in error. And what we end up with, we add this up, is the 22190 from the bank statement. We add and subtract the adjustments and we get a correct cash balance of 21044. On the book side, on the accounting records, we start off with a balance of 20,502. In the question, they tell you that the cash balance per book is 20,502. There's interest collected by the bank that we don't find out about as a company on the books until we get the bank statement of $600. There's a company error. We wrote a check and inverted some numbers, and so the amount that we deducted from the checkbook was $180 more than the actual check was written for by $180. If you go up in the question here, the language they use is, the company discovered that check 7322 written in November for $131 in payment of an accounts payable had been recorded in the books that is on the accounting records for $311. So the one and the three were reversed in error, written in the wrong order. The difference is $180. We need to add that to the checkbook because we subtracted too much from the books. Bank charges, we subtract those. We find out about that when we get the bank statement. A return check, we need to subtract that because that check, that deposit that the book put down as a deposit, the bank did not pay. So we need to subtract that to get to the correct balance. And once again, the correct balance is the sum of the balance per the accounting records and the plus and minuses of the adjustments. So what we just did was a bank reconciliation. Proof of cash that will at least start in this video is more difficult. And you can see the source, the Wiley source, where I got information for this question. And I put down here in the notes that this method, proof of cash, is preferred by auditors. And it's preferred because you reconcile four numbers, as you'll see in a minute, rather than just one balance. That one balance is cash at the end of the period. You'll see the headings down below in a minute that you actually reconcile four numbers with proof of, proof of cash, the beginning and the ending cash balance. You also reconcile the receipts 
between the bank and the book and disbursements between the bank and the book. And it went on to say in the website, auditors frequently use this form because their main objective is, is to identify all the items that make up the difference between the bank records and the depositor's records, the depositor being the company. Now, I suggest the way you set this up is, first of all, you put across the top these four columns. The balance on October 31st, which was the beginning of the month, receipts during November, disbursements during November, and an ending November 30th balance. Now bear in mind that the balance, this column matches the reconciliation entries that you did over here, with one exception. You'll see that the 2190, the 22190, the 3680, the outstanding checks are the way they appear. They just appear over here just as they appear on the bank rec, 3680, 5001. However, the items in the bottom half, the Adjustments to the books, these entries in proof of cash are actually reversed. So, for example, in the bank reconciliation, this was a positive $600 interest collected by the bank. In the proof of cash, it's subtracted. One other $180 error is added from, to balance per book to get the correct balance of cash. 21044. However, in proof of cash, that amount is subtracted. So these amounts are reversed in comparison with the amounts that we see on the bank rec. And that is because we, have, we reconcile from the bank to the correct balance, the book to the correct balance on the bank reconciliation. On the proof of cash, we go between two numbers. We go from The balance per the bank, which is the 22,190, and we compare that to the balance per book here at the bottom. And you'll notice that there is not a correct balance on the proof of cash. Those correct balances that we saw in the bank rec, 21,044 for both the bank and the book, are not in the proof of cash. Instead, we go from the bank statement, the 22,190, down to the book balance down here. So please note that difference. We reconcile from the bank balance per the bank statement down to the book balance per the accounting records. Those numbers appear over here. So the balance per book, 2502 matches the balance here. And one more time, the beginning bank balance of 22,190 matches the balance of the bank statement. Now, what we do in between is the tough part. I'm going to do a few of these and then we'll continue on a second video. So I suggest that you do fill in the November 30th information first. Fill in the information from the bank reconciliation, remembering that the entries toward the bottom are reversed. So do that first. Do the right column first. Then do a bank reconciliation for October 31st. And this is the last thing I'll cover in this segment, and then we'll do the receipts and disbursements on the next video. So we have a beginning balance per bank as of October 31st, per the bank statement. We have a balance per book, the balance of cash and our accounting records. We have deposit in transit at October 31st, deposits that have not posted to the bank statement. They get added back, just like we did on November 30th. Outstanding checks on October 31st get subtracted. We saw the same thing over here on November 30th. And we add those up and we get the balance per book 
of 18,020 on October 31st. So fill in the bank reconciliation columns first, put in the headings, and then the last step that we'll do on the next video is understanding the receipts and disbursements in the middle that are the hardest part of the proof of cash. That's as far as we're going to get right now. Remember that on the website, stltest.net, we have our toughest accounting topics, topics that I'm asked about the most that I teach in a small group live chat. Here are the topics that I teach and the dates of the meetings are updated all the time. And finally, the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies. I teach a chapter of the book online. I try to do it every week if I'm in town. You can email me if you'd like a link to that free one-hour meeting. We cover about a chapter a week when I do the free one-hour live chat on the book, Cost Accounting for Dummies. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.